Yeah, good. Thank you. Yourself? Mate, I'm very good. I'm very good. The, the voice is um, it's starting to go. I think I talk too much, to be honest. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get through it. Just so everyone knows, I'm not a smoker. All right. I know it sounds like it, but I'm not a smoker. Nice little <laughs> yeah, never heard anyone. Um, where have we caught you today, mate? Obviously, uh, you're up in, in Queensland, but for anyone who doesn't you know, know whereabouts you are, where do you live? Yeah, I'm just uh, in the west part of Brisbane, just at home today, um, pottering around, nothing much to do on the Friday, but yeah. How have you been with, obviously, um, uni and, and stuff like that? Have, have you been affected in, in any way with that? Did you have to start doing classes at home or Zoom sessions? How's that been? Um, yeah, so, well, I guess the time off swimming sort of helped uni a bit. Um, it allowed me to sort of catch up because we were tossing up between dropping another subject or not. But um, the time from home, it's given me actually something to do. Um, all the online stuff, it's pretty, it's pretty flexible. Yeah. The, UQ have done a brilliant job at it, I reckon. Um, but yeah, no, it's been crazy actually. I don't mind the online learn. Yeah, yeah, it's much easier at home. You don't even have to yeah, get yeah. dressed. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> mate, after the meet you had last year at Junior Worlds uh, in mm. Budapest, you must have been buzzing for this year and, and for obviously National Age Champs. This would have been your last one, was it? Or Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would that have been. Uh, yeah, and, and obviously yeah. trials for for Tokyo yeah. how did you go with all that news and obviously it's out of your control but still you know you can't help but sort of be a bit down when you first hear it yeah well when I first heard it like especially the age you know it's your last age you still want to have a good crack at that um like I was still eligible for that junior team and then sort of like obviously there was that uh goal to also do well at trials but um like personally I guess being a young bloke the extra the extra year doesn't actually hurt me too much like yeah. I reckon it could work in my favor a lot um you know extra year under my belt a bit of growing still to do and hopefully mm. next well I guess this time next year we've got some good news on the way <laughs> mate with with training during COVID obviously I know you've been back for about two months now maybe even a little bit longer but there was a yeah. period of time where, where you weren't able to get in what did what did you do did you have a home gym did you throw a bungee on and jump in the backyard pool what we or, yeah, well, or did you just sit on the computer and play games <laughs> <laughs> no nah, i try to stay away from that as much as possible <laughs> but um no nah, i brought my, my old footy boots back out the, mm -hmm. uh, and some um rusty old ones down the dumps but um me and my brother sort of you know kicked the footy a fair bit went down to the old west bulldogs stomping yeah. ground um catch up with some mates you know but otherwise, it was just, you know, the bungee training, got some stuff from the pool to take home for gym. But um, mm. it, no, nah, it was pretty, I guess it's annoying, but everyone's in the same boat. You just got to find something to keep you occupied and not stack on the kilos, which was <laughs> good. <laughs> Easier for some than others, mate. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I like it, Ducky, but, uh, you mentioned the footy boots there, mate. Did you, did you play footy? What, what did you play? Yeah, I played Union back in the day. Um, I actually snapped my tibia and fibula in grade Ouch. eight so after that i sort of just played for a bit of fun school yeah. footy and then swimming sort of took off so i thought it wasn't worth it anymore but still love going out watch watching the school boys and then now you know hopefully the reds start picking it up <laughs> mate i'm not i'm not a union guy but you know I, I know i'm not a reds fan that's for sure i'm sure if i had yeah. to go for anyone it'd be waratahs <laughs> or on the rise. yeah oh, brumbies brumbies maybe i don't know who who knows? I don't know if anyone even watches those those games. I think, yeah. I think they're, they're going to get axed yeah. soon, aren't they? You, I'll start showing a, New Zealand a, games instead. Yeah, you get a seat in the stands, that's sure. <laughs> Mate, sure when you got back in the pool, was it uh, easier or harder than you thought it was going to be that sort of first week? Um, oh, it was it just... Because swimming, it's such a feel sort of sport. And, you know, you come back and it's just a bit whack. You're like, shit, where am I? <laughs> yeah. But, um... You know, after a, after a week or so, you, obviously you lose the fitness, but the feel comes back pretty quick. So now it's just building that back up. Hey, talk to me about how swimming started for you. Like, well, what are your earliest memories in the pool and what, what drew you to the pool? Yeah, well, I actually grew up in Hong Kong. I was born there. Um, we moved over there for work. Well, dad's work, sorry. Um, lived there for about seven, eight years. And my mm. brother and sister actually were swimmers and you know decent swimmers so, yeah. so i just sort of followed them into the pool hey, um, hong kong there. there's a little bit that i didn't get in my yeah. research how yeah. was it growing up over there <laughs> yeah no nah, not too many people know it but yeah <laughs> little fun fact <laughs> yeah what was it like over there 
Yeah, it was good. I, I really enjoyed it. You know, we, we still stay in touch over there, head over back there every three years or so. Mm. Um, it's a bit of a, um, you know, different show over there now with all the riots. So we might stay away, but yeah, um, I'd advise not coming back yeah. for a little bit. Mate. <laughs> the riots, coronavirus, <laughs> probably not a good time. Yeah. 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 Go defend the country. <laughs> but, um, no, nah, but yeah, no, nah, I really enjoyed it. I was only up there to like grade three, so I can't really remember like all my mates there. I think heaps of them moved to Australia anyway, but my brother still keeps in touch with all his mates because he was older. Mate, a lot of swimmers have big meets, qualifying times that they, they try and achieve. And at one point, I know you're killing it now, but at one point that was you trying to get these times and things like that. What were a few things that you did struggle with, um, you know, as you were coming up as an age grouper? For example, you know, was it nerves? Was it executing race plans? I know uh, as we, you know, get further and further in swimming, those race plans start to become a, a little bit more, um, yeah. You know, technical in terms of stroke rates and what splits yeah. you got to be holding here. Yeah. It, what, what have you had to overcome? Uh, well, I reckon sort of when I was around that twelve and thirteen mark, you know, um, you know where all the all the boys start growing, like the early rises. And yeah. I feel like you know I was still a skinny lad. I'm mm-hmm. only just you know shot up, and definitely yeah. back then, like I was still up there. I was still just pottering out around that third, fourth, second mark. But I always wanted that that top spot, and then. Yeah. It was always just about staying in the sport, working on your technique and then waiting for a bit of growth and then, well, it'll come. Mm. It's yeah, a good it's point fun. you make there, mate, about that. And I've had a few boys myself, um, some that have stayed in, but some that haven't, that you've had to yeah. try and give the sell to at 12 and 13. You know, I know you're little and I know that guy over there has a yeah. mustache, but yeah. <laughs> you, you eventually will grow. And, yeah, exactly. and to be honest, some of those kids that I've coached, you know, I, I looked at the swimmers that mm. were beating them. I'm like, you're you're going to knock him off in three yeah, or four exactly. years. It's a hard time, sell. Yeah, at the time you think it's being all and end all. You're like, holy crap, how's that bloke? six foot seven and I'm still a twig, you know, like yeah. <laughs> it's tough at the time, but you just listen to your older, older athletes and your coaches and your parents and they'll tell you to grow. Hopefully. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad you listened. Some of the other swimmers of mine yeah. didn't listen and they're off. <laughs> yeah. God knows doing what around the streets of Sydney. Now, yeah. now I want to get stuck into last year's national age champs and, and yeah. the results. Cause you killed it. No doubt. You came over seven medals, five gold, two silver. Yeah. Um, and before we get to the meet itself, what was training like in the lead up to, to that? I'm always fascinated when people go to a meet, whether it's you guys with National Age and Junior Worlds or I'm talking to Grant Hackett in the lead up to him breaking a world record. I'm always interested in you know, what was the lead up like? Like what went so right for you to be able to then go and compete and just yeah. and kill it? What, what was it like? Was it increased workload? Did you start, you know, was there just no interruption so you were healthy and fit? Um, well... I guess just from the start of like right from the start of preparation, you know, we got the, that early aerobic base in um, and then that sort of just kicked, kick started everything. You know, we had the, even the lead up meets were, we were just knocking off the targets each do- each time. Um, like even the school champs, the GPS champs, which is big and I wanted to do well in that. Yeah. And that was about seven weeks prior, I think, or six weeks prior. So we used that as a little lead up meet. Um, and then, yeah, it all sort of just fell into place, you know, right timing. Um, and then it's also just improving on what, what we did in December at States. And then obviously after age, we just sit back and then see what we can improve again. But we don't like to change too much. You know, if it works, keep doing it, I reckon. Keep it Absolutely. simple. Um, if it ain't broke, don't yeah. fix it. Yeah, exactly right. Mate, did any swim of that week stand out for you in any way and, and why? Obviously, I know you like the 400 and you, you like yeah. the 1500, but was there one sort of standout? Um, I reckon the, the 1500 sort of, and even the 800, you know, the 800 cracking that eight minute bar- barrier for the first time, like just seeing it on the boards a bit. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah. That. But, um, <laughs> but, and the 1500, like at the end of the week, you know, you're pretty buggered. Um, and then to put together just a good, good solid swim, which is what I want to do with my coach. And then, um, yeah, put together it all and I was happy. Glad you mentioned that at the end of the week you were buggered because it, it does interest me with someone like yourself who's doing a 1,500, an 800, 400 IM. God damn. I mean, you, you're a glutton for punishment, but you obviously you love it. What's it like <laughs> through that week though? How challenging is it to, to always try and be up because you've got finals, you've got heats? Um, yeah. you know, what have you got to get right that week? Is it recovery? Is it nutrition? 
Yeah, well, it's pretty. It is pretty brutal. Um, especially, I find I actually find states especially brutal because that is right in Queensland summer. Yeah, the coaches uh, do too, mate. Let me tell you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sweat box that down, <laughs> yeah. down the place. At least we can do the pool. Um, but yeah, no. Nah, well, but I've been doing it since I was like eight years old. So, yeah. like to say, I'm used to it. Like, I guess I am, but I'm. All, it does hurt every time. Um, but I guess you just got to train for it and that's what we do. So Mm. in terms of maybe the recovery and stuff like that though, how how important is that and how much are you guided by your coach and how much now are you switched on enough to know what you've got to do yourself? Yeah, exactly. So especially the food, which I I didn't even know much about until like more recent years. Like I'll just go home, eat whatever, yeah go to bed but now it's actually you know you need to get this sort of food in uh, as soon as you finish your race do this sort of recovery and i think that's definitely helped with those long weeks especially in like you know as i said last year and even at junior worlds but um yeah sleep's a big one don't complain about that but um especially teenagers on their phones instead of going to sleep yeah exactly and that yeah that is a big one nowadays as well because you can just stay up all night scrolling Absolutely. through the feed. Oh, yeah. I know, mate. Don't worry. The parents always say to me, Robbie, can you talk to him or her? Doesn't matter, boy or girl, we're all on your phones. And I yeah, say, yeah, What yeah. am I going to do? Yeah. I'm sitting at my house. Well, I can't tell you, kid. Well, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, Lock them in a drawer. That's, yeah. that's my advice to all the parents. Lock them in a drawer because they will, yeah. they'll actually find the key and they'll get it out. Mm. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we've mentioned your coach a few times now, Damo. Um, yeah. Very nice guy. Uh, and I, I've gotten to know Damo a bit and, and a great, yeah, great guy. Damien Jones for all the listeners who, yeah. who don't know Damo is and, and you train at Rackley. How yeah. important is Damo to your success and, and how does he help you the most, do you think? Oh, he's a, he's a proper legend actually. Cause I've been un, like sort of under him since back at like Clayfield when I was 10. I've never, I haven't actually been like his direct coach yeah. until leading until the preparation up till junior worlds last year. But he's been, you know, sort of running the, the whole club yeah. and the whole preparations and stuff. But, um, Oh, he's more like, he's more than just a coach, coach, I guess, you know, he's a mate. He texts me weird stuff every day. He's keeping mm-hmm. the memes coming his his new songs. <laughs> it's, his sports betting addiction, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, nah, yeah, no, nah, he's definitely more than just a coach, and I guess that's why I sort of love the sport coming in day in out, day in day out, and um, mm. seeing him and just having a yarn, not not even talking about swimming, just just life. So that's good. You mentioned there, obviously, you'd, but you've had a few other coaches in the lead up to there. Do you want to give a shout out to those guys? Like, who's who's helped you get to this point? Yeah, well, I guess early in the days is Tim Dilger, Digger. He's actually the assistant coach now of Rackley. Um, Mm -hmm. And then I guess after that, I had Justin Bell, who's down in Melbourne now for about five years. He was a big influencer, I guess, in like all that age group stuff. Great bloke, absolute legend. Um, And then he moved down to Melbourne after age last year for his girlfriend and family. So that was sad. I know the feeling, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Happy life, happy life. Yeah. Just better marry her. <laughs> yeah. Mate, anything we don't know about Damo that, you know, only you guys get to see on the pool deck. Like mm. you said there, he's, you know, he's sports betting addiction. Yeah. No, he's, he's not he's actually. Students. No, no, I don't know. So it's all jokes. <laughs> but yeah, we're, anything we yeah. don't know. Um, well, he's not actually that top notch at sports bet. Um, <laughs> and loves his sort of trance music. Absolutely loves it. Um, to, to see him just put you pop your head up and he's having a full disco rave at the <laughs> other end of the pool if we had strobe lights and if it was indoor pool he would be flicking that in his color. element right yeah he's a <laughs> he, he's a dance fiend but um yeah that's all we love about him he keeps things interesting every set's got a new little quirky ring to it um yeah. A 2019 Junior World Champs in Budapest, I, I mentioned at the top of the show. And you definitely kept the good form going from nationals, and I'll get to those results again in a minute. Yeah. For all the swimmers out there listening who haven't been to a, a Junior World Champs like this, what are some of the biggest challenges you faced there um, You know, when you went over? And, and how, say, different is it to a, a, a national age champs? Oh, yeah, it was mental, actually. Because <laughs> I, I did not know what to expect. Because I had the junior pan packs, but... 
that was sort of just, you know, it was a different sort of environment, but junior yeah. worlds, it was proper hectic. Like, you know, you got the, the full television, what you do stuff. Um, everything's there. It's so professional. Everything's just a top class, a grade stuff. And, yeah. and I know swimming Australia and all that's really good, but yeah. this is just a whole nother level. And it was pretty cool actually. Cause I didn't even know what to expect. And um, yeah, no, it's just special lifts you up. Yeah. What are the competitors like around there? Are there some people who are really cool and good to have a chat with? Are there some people who sort of act like dicks as if like they're the world champion already and they're getting around as if like, don't talk to me? Like, yeah, what's the vibe around pool deck? Or is it very friendly and everyone's happy to have a chat? Oh, well, June, like I reckon June is pretty, it's like, it's, it's full on, but you know, it's a bit of a more chill vibe. Um, everyone's usually friendly. You get the occasional ego yank but um yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that you are you're gonna get that everywhere you go but um nah yeah junior's fun everyone's happy you know you're with you with your mates who you've been swimming age group with for a long time especially your age group and then you get to meet new blokes from um, other countries as well mm. some you can't really speak to obviously because they're speaking <laughs> croatian or whatever but but it's good fun <laughs> it is good fun Racing wise, uh, you did pretty good, and you got to be proud of what you achieved. You got four medals, silver yeah. in the four and the fifteen, right. bronze in the in the eight hundred, and with the boys, I think in the four by two as as well. Yeah, got to be pretty happy. Yeah, no, I was stoked that it was just such a fun meet, um, and then just to put together the results that which what we wanted, um, it was just nice. It was just nice to get the job done. <laughs> I, I mentioned. Uh, the the 1500 and the sub 15 swim that you went mm. uh, and it puts you in pretty good company now mate as i said before with some legendary names yeah. how motivating is that as a factor to you in terms of goal setting or are you just simply you know i just want to go out and be better than i was before oh yeah obviously i've got my goals especially in that event um but it gives you just a bit of boost of confidence i feel that 15 minute barrier like in terms of your mind, you, you, you just think to yourself, I'm not a, I'm not a 15 minute swimmer anymore. I'm a 20, 59 swimmer. I've got to, yeah. I've got to act like one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and then I guess that it gives you a little boost in confidence and it gives you a little boost in training, just little bits here and there. And then obviously transition that into a goal. Um, and we got to wait an extra year, mm. but that's right. So yeah, as, as I said, where do the goals go from that though? Is it just okay? It was fourteen fifty nine. Now I want to be faster than that, or do you start looking at records that are, you know a Grant Hackett at eighteen or Mac Horton at eighteen? I'm not across one hundred percent who has the eighteen year old record, but, <laughs> but yeah, that's what I mean. Like, do you look at those things, or do you simply go, all right, fourteen fifty nine? I've got to try and beat that mark. Um. Well, obviously, like at the major meets, you wanna you wanna do a PB, but um you also want to race who your present competition is and, you know, try to be the best of the best, I guess. Mm. And um, I guess that's the goal, focusing on myself and how I can do that, you know, how I can mix it with those older boys, especially next year. Um, and we've got a plan for that. We'll work towards that and hopefully it'll take care of itself. It's hard, a bit of hard work. Mate, we've, we've talked a lot about you individually, but I know you love, you know, being a part of the team, being around the boys. How much fun was, were the relays over there with the boys? Oh, yeah, that was hectic. I had the privilege of, I think I did three, two or three relays. And, yeah, it was just, it was pretty hectic. Like, you're all in there together. Um, they say swimming's an individual sport, but when you do something like that, you really do know you've got three other blokes behind your back. Um, and it just... It can make you more nervous or it can take a weight off your shoulders. Personally, it made me a bit more nervous because I, I felt like I had a job to do. I wasn't just letting down myself. I, was, I could potentially let down the other three boys. But yeah. I know they wouldn't see it that way. But you always have that thing in the back of your head telling you that might. But um, yeah, nah, it was, it was just good fun. good fun. That four by two obviously was a standout. Yeah, yeah. Especially to get that done with the... Um, team like that and apparently it was the one of the first i think first junior team where we all went sub 150 i think barrow said mm, but um very nice so yeah and we didn't even know that until he told us so again another little boost in all of us you know to 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 be proud that we were a part of that i like to finish our chats with some less serious questions mate because i think mm. these sort of answers give us a little bit more of an insight into you know what tommy neil's like away from yeah. from the pool so yeah. I'll throw it out there and whatever first comes to your head, you throw it back. So 
What's your favorite music to listen to? Trance. Yes. Influenced, obviously, by your, no. by your coach. No, um, no, no, no lyrics. <laughs> favorite movies. I'll give you movies. You can have a few. All right. I like Fast and Furious. Yeah. Um, fan of the, the new Creeds, even the, the old Rockies. Um, yeah. I, may, I like it too. And isn't it funny how much they can flog a dead horse? Like, we know what's going to happen. We know that he's going to come back. We already know this and we're like, oh, he's going to, but then we still get, I still get goosebumps at the end when he's doing it. I'm like, I know, know. absolute animal. (laughs) (laughs) What about, mate, you're a swimmer, so you love your feeds. What are some of your favorite meals? Oh, chicken palmy at the Coolum Beach Surf Club or even the Coolum Beach Hotel. That goes all right. Um, Chicken palmy. What do you have? Do you have um, salad or veggies? Because they always ask that. Salad or veggies? And I say it doesn't really matter because I won't be eating either. But yeah, I'm sure you get amongst it. <laughs> I give my salad to my mum. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Just shift it on. Yeah. What about favourite TV shows, mate? What do you like to watch? Um, oh, I've just actually finished The Office. Oh, yeah? American yeah. version? Yeah, the American version. It was unreal. <laughs> my dad's watching it at the moment. I'm just, like, re-watching it with him. I, I thought it was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. It is very, very you funny. I actually started watching um, the English version, which was the first one with Ricky Gervais, oh, right. um, which is it's equally funny. as funny. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely good. funny. It's slightly different humour because they're English and they're, you know, but yeah. I prefer the English humour a little bit better. But yeah, still funny. Still funny. Have you seen the in-between, is it? Of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, very, very yeah. funny stuff. None of the jokes we can uh, we can say on here, but yes. I don't think we can. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, I love when he throws that kid in the pool and the kid can't swim. <laughs> What's that? That's from the first one? That's the first one, isn't it? The, in between the his movie? movie? Um, when they go to Greece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Manchester. Manchester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He only throws the kid in the pool. <laughs> he can't swim. Um, <laughs> we're going to get off track, mate, if you keep yeah. talking about that. Um what about favorite games to play, mate? Now, are, are you a gamer? I'm not. So any of your answers yeah. are purely to the audience who are gamers because I have no idea. Yeah, no, I'm personally not actually. I, I did go through that, that was it for, the Fortnite stage yeah. back in grade 12, but um, I'm really not talented at all. Yeah. Um, I was really letting down my mates. <laughs> they, they weren't too happy. So I decided just to make everyone happy and give it away <laughs> getting hammered getting hammered yeah. through the um through the headphones were you with people just telling you oh mate i had to turn that crap off <laughs> <laughs> getting it you. now mate, as a coach obviously I, I love my quotes um whether i you know, i say some myself and i pretend that they are mine or i i do you know take some from <laughs> from others what about yeah. yourself have you heard any good quotes or any that stick with you that you like to keep um Oh, well, me and Damo have a, have a little one sort of going. Um, you, do you know Ronnie Coleman? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the lightweight baby? I don't know that, but I know Ronnie Coleman. Oh, yeah. if, you watch his, if you watch a couple of his YouTube videos, yeah, lifting about 6,000 kilos and he's just screaming lightweight baby. <laughs> so we, whenever, whenever we're hurting during training, he, Damo's just yelling at me. But, yeah. um, it's a little thing, but it stays with you. Oh, very nice, mate. Whatever works. Now, yeah. listen, that intro already at such a young age was was fantastic with everything that I said about you. When you come back on in, say, two or three years' time, what will I be adding to the intro? Or what would you like me to be adding to the intro anyway? <laughs> oh, there's a lot of, a lot of possible things, I guess. But um, obviously, hopefully next year, it is a big year. Um, first year, I guess, out of a junior environment. Mm. Um, but personally, I don't like, I don't, I don't like putting pressure on myself, you know, especially this early on, but yeah, I've got my goals next year of, you know, next July, hopefully being on that team going mm-hmm. to Tokyo or whatever events, um, you know, representing your country at the, the, the highest honor. It's every yeah. kid's dream. And, um, if that comes brilliant, but if not, you know, you just, there's definitely plenty of other ten. Uh, plenty other open teams next year and plenty of opportunities down the track. So, but yeah, 
We'll just wait and see what happens. <laughs> very well said, mate. Very level-headed. I put you on the spot there and you navigated around it very well. <laughs> so you're professional in the making and interviews. Um, mate, I think it's a perfect chance to wrap it up there. Firstly, yeah. thank you for coming on. Uh, I know you. you guys are back into training, mate, and I appreciate you taking the time to, to come on and have a chat. Good luck over yeah. the next, you know, nine, 10, however long it is, months and with training and obviously yeah. uh, racing your state champs in December and, and national champs next year. So I wish you all the best. Hopefully yeah. we'll, we'll have another thank chat you, somewhere down the track, mate, but thank you for coming yeah. on off the block swimming podcast. No, appreciate it. Thanks Robbie. Cheers, buddy. Today's episode of off the block swimming podcast is proudly brought to you by arena Australia and arena NZ.